Welcome back to Sunday School this week. I hope you've had a great week at home. Now we're just going to do a prayer drill before we start. Are you ready? One, two, three. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week. We thank you for all the days that you have given to us. We just pray now that as we come to listen to your word, that you help us to remember it. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Great job. Now it's time for our first song, which is Ask, Seek and Knock. Why not join in at home? I'm reading my B.I.B. early And this is what it says to me It tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J.E.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares Tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J.S.U.S. came down to us and gave his best. Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. It's now time for our memory verse today. And our memory verse today is about being lost. I wonder, have you ever been lost? Maybe you've been in the supermarket, mum or dad or someone you're with goes around to the, the different aisle and you don't see them go. You look around and you wonder where they are. And how relieved are you whenever you're finally found? Either you find them or they find you. Well, this verse today is all talking about being lost and about how someone has come to find them. Well, our Bible verse today is found in Luke 19 verse 10 and this is what the Bible says. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. I think we can have a go at trying to learn this. First of all, I think what we'll do is we're going to see if we can do patting our head and rubbing our tummy. Are you ready? After two. One, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. 
brilliant job. Now this is the tricky part. Try and do it with your other hand the other way around. Some people find it impossible. Let's see how we get on. After two, one, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Hopefully you did a good job at home. Now what's this verse talking about? Who is this Son of Man? Well, the Bible tells us this is another name for Jesus. Jesus is also called Son of Man. And there's another word in this verse that maybe you're thinking, well, why is he coming to seek and to save the lost? Who are these lost people? Well, we're born in sin and we don't know God. And if we don't know God, we're lost from him. We don't know anything about him. That's who these lost people are. Sinners who haven't yet trusted in Jesus. But this verse contains a promise that God is looking for them. Let's see if we can learn this with actions this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And we think about the world because everyone in the world is born apart from God. Let's see if we can do the actions this time. Are you ready after two? One, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I think you can do a better job at home than that. Are you ready? After two, one, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Brilliant job. Now seek is a weird word, but it just means to look for. So Jesus is looking for those who are outside his kingdom and he is wanting to bring them into a family, into a relationship with him because he's coming to save them and that's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of the cross that Jesus died and he died for us so that we can become part of his family because he took the price for all our sins but he also rose again and because of that we can trust in him. Now we're going to do our verse again but this time I'm not going to help you but I am going to do the actions for you. You say it a lot at home, okay? I'll help you with by saying where it's found and then that's where I stop. Are you ready to try? After two, one, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. I wonder how well you got on at home. This time, I'm going to try it again, but I want you to say it in a really loud voice. Are you ready? After two, one, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Brilliant. This time, I want you to just close your eyes and I'll help you by saying it just to finish off. Are you ready? After two, one, two. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Brilliant. Thank you. And now it's time for our next song. God is living. He's alive today.
it's now time for our story. I wonder, can you remember back to last week? Do you remember Boaz becoming Ruth, kinsman redeemer? That family member who would have looked after her, married her and bought Elimelech's land? Well, I am sure Boaz ran home to tell Ruth the good news. And soon wedding plans were underway. I wonder if you knew what an Israelite wedding would have been like. Well, Boaz and his friends would have came to Naomi's house. There, an older man would have blessed the couple. And then Boaz would lead his beautiful bride through Bethlehem streets. Along the streets, the guests of the wedding would be there, holding fire torches. And whenever Boaz and Ruth passed them by, the guests would have followed along behind, creating a great parade. And they would have come to Boaz's house at the end, where there would have been a feast. And this feast would have lasted days, all to celebrate the fact that Ruth and Boaz were now husband and wife. Was Ruth an outsider now? No, she became part of the Israelites. And this was all part of God's plan for her life. His plans are wonderful because God is good, kind and wise. And he has the power to make sure all his plans happen. God had planned a way that we as sinners could belong to him and be part of his family. And if we've asked Jesus to forgive us, we'll want to thank God for this. I'm sure Ruth and Boaz were thanking God for what had happened to them. Ruth was no longer having to clean the fields and try and get as much food as possible. And now Boaz had a wife and a happy home. And after some time, they gave birth to a baby boy. I am sure everyone in Bethlehem was delighted at this news, especially Naomi. For this baby, well, he would have a Limerick's name. The family name wouldn't die out. The Bible actually tells us what people said to Naomi. Because they, the women said to her, Praise the Lord, he has given you a grandson today to take care of you. May the boy become famous in Israel. Your daughter-in-law loves you and has done more for you than seven sons. And now she has given you a grandson who will bring new life to you and give you security in your old age. Everyone was so excited. But what did they name him? I'm going to give you to the count of three to think of a boy's name. Are you ready? One, two, three. Well, Ruth and Boaz's baby boy was called Obed. I'm not sure you would have got that. It's not a popular name now. But this name means worshipper. Obed's birth was all part of a bigger plan. Because ever since Adam and Eve had sinned, God had promised to send a saviour to the Israelites. Obed, Ruth and Boaz's son, was the father of Jesse. Jesse had eight sons. And the youngest one is the most famous. He was David, a shepherd boy who God chose to be his king of Israel. And God's plan was that the saviour would come through David's family. Several hundred years later, it seemed that this plan wouldn't happen because the Israelites looked like they were going to be wiped out. Their land had been invaded many times and so many Jews had been taken as prisoner. Do you think God would change his plan now? No, that's why God's plans are wonderful because what God plans he always carries out because some Jews were saved. At that time, God had planned to send his son to be the saviour, and he sent him into the world as a baby. He was born in Bethlehem, the same city that Boaz and Ruth had lived in, and God had recorded the names of all those in the family line of this special baby. And Ruth and Boaz were there because their son Obed, well, he was part of the family line. Can you imagine Ruth, the outsider from Moab, was in the family line of the saviour? She was no longer an outsider. This was all part of God's plan. Can you imagine what this must have been like? If you love Jesus, God has a plan for your life. God doesn't want to ruin your fun. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God's plans are always the best. And it's good to ask God to help you make the right choices as you grow up. Because his plans for your life, they're always going to be good. And the biggest and best plan he has for you is to make you more like Jesus. God chose Mary from King David's family to be the mother of his son. And Jesus, well, he had no human father because God was his father. But his father on earth was Joseph. And Jesus had come to earth as baby to be our kinsman, our redeemer. Because Mary and Joseph had taken baby Jesus to the temple. And an old man called Simeon was there. And he instantly knew who this baby was. He knew this baby was the Redeemer. He said, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. 
because as you promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Because beforehand, Simeon had been told he wouldn't die until he had seen God's chosen Redeemer. Baby Jesus, well, he didn't have an easy life because he had to escape Herod trying to kill him. But he had lived a perfect life because he never sinned. And I imagine the disciples thought that God's plan was going to collapse, especially whenever Jesus was taken to the cross. The Jewish leaders probably thought that their plan had worked, their plan to get rid of Jesus. The Roman authorities thought they were punishing a criminal. But actually, all of their plans were part of God's overall plan. Because Jesus needed to be punished by his father in order for us to become part of his family. He was treated like an outsider on the cross as he paid the price for our sins. And friends took his body, they buried him, and his enemies sealed the entrance and stood outside standing guard. Did this make a difference to God's plan? It didn't, because three days later, Jesus rose again. He is a living redeemer who can bring outsiders like you and me to God. The Lord Jesus went back to heaven and we're still waiting for God to carry out the next part of his plan. Because Jesus will return to earth one day and those who have ever followed and received him will live with him forever. And those who haven't will be outsiders from God forever. I wonder, have you been listening to this story? Have you realised which one you will be? Only you and God know the answer. Whether you'll be one of the ones who are welcomed as part of his family or one of the ones who won't. But you still have the opportunity. You can ask God to forgive you right now where you are. And that's the end of our story today. Now it's time to finish our meeting in prayer. Are you ready? After two. One, two. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the story of Ruth. Lord, I just pray that if there's any boy and girl who does not know you yet, that Lord, you'll help them to make the right decision, the decision to follow you. And Lord, for those who have, Lord, I just pray that you'll guide them in their path of their own life. And Lord, that you'll help them to make the right choices. For in your name we pray. Amen. That's it for Sunday School this week. Bye.